Hi DIY enthusiasts and professionals, I'm Rodrigo Rivera, shop owner and professor. Today I'm partnering with AutoLine Pro who provides high quality diagnostic tools at great affordable prices. Today we're giving you an automotive educational series to enlighten you about the automotive world so you too can be an expert within this system. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe down below for more DIY goodness. In this series, we're going to be talking about the evaporative emission systems. To keep it short, we'll call it the EVAP system. We're going to be focusing on three main points. The first one is the importance of the system. The second is the components of the system. And thirdly is the primary function of each component. It's really important when addressing and identifying problems within the EVAP system so you too can diagnose the problems. But enough for intros, let's get started. The EVAP system is responsible for capturing all the fumes within the fuel system. The whole point of the EVAP system is to allow all the fumes to get processed and not be released into the atmosphere. If they were released into the atmosphere, it would cause damage to our environment. After 1996, EVAP systems have become much more complicated and much more regulated to ensure they function properly. There are seven components within the evaporative emission system. We have the charcoal canister, the purge valve, the vent valve, the gas cap that seals up the system from the top, the fuel pressure sensor, all the lines that interconnect these components, and the fuel tank that stores all the fuel. Let's get into more detail about these components. Fuel is introduced into the system by removing the cap at the filler tube. As fuel travels down the filler tube, it enters the fuel tank where it is stored for later use. Because fuel is very volatile, it evaporates and produces vapors. From the fuel tank, the vapors build up and travel to the charcoal canister. Here is where the vapors are stored. The vapors produced in the fuel tank travel through interconnected tubing system in order to get the vapors to the engine so it can be burned up. There are two main devices that govern the movement of the vapors in the EVAP system. We have the purge valve that uses engine vacuum to pull in the vapors. Normally the purge valve is located by the intake manifold. We also have the vent valve that allows atmospheric air to enter the EVAP system for compensation of pressure and self-testing. Normally the vent valve is mounted onto the canister. Both these devices are controlled by the vehicle's computer. It takes in many inputs to determine when it's an appropriate time to be activated. During operation of the EVAP system, the purge valve will open. This then begins to pull in the vapors from the canister. During this time, the vent valve will also be open to allow atmospheric air into the system to compensate for the vacuum created. As the vapors travel through the system, it will pass through the purge valve and enter into the combustion chamber of the engine. Once the vapors are in the chamber, they are ignited and processed, completing the EVAP cycle. The first component that we're going to be talking about is a charcoal canister. In its name, it has charcoal infused material inside. This material helps absorb all these fumes. Think of the charcoal canister as a storage unit. Usually the charcoal canister is located underneath the car, so to access this, you're going to have to lift the car up. It can be in the mid section or in the rear section of the vehicle. The next component they have is the purge valve. It has an inlet port and an outlet port. It also has a connector to be actuated. This purge valve is controlled by the power control module when necessary. The whole purpose of this valve is to be activated and open up to allow vacuum to pull in all the fumes from the canister. This valve is usually located underneath the hood of the car right next to the intake manifold. Always check your databases to ensure that your purge valve is within that location. The next component that we're going to be talking about is the vent valve. The vent valve is usually connected straight to the canister, which means to access this component, you're going to have to lift up the vehicle. It has an inlet port, an outlet port, and a connector for it to be actuated. Naturally, the vent valve is open, and when charged, it's closed. The vent valve is controlled by the power control module when conditions are appropriate within the evaporative emission system. On to the next component, we have the gas cap. The gas cap is designed to come off and on during fueling. It's a threaded design with an O-ring around its perimeter, so it can ensure its seal so that the fumes do not escape. The gas cap will connect straight to the filler tube where the fuel will travel down into the fuel tank. On newer vehicles, the gas cap is completely eliminated and a new flap design is generated. It's the same principles in everything. The flap has a return spring that allows it to sit back all the way and hold the seal so that fumes cannot escape. The next component of our EVAP system is the fuel pressure sensor. This unit is designed onto the fuel pump assembly. The assembly will be placed right on top of the fuel tank. As you can see here, the fuel pressure sensor is this black unit with this connector. With that connector, it communicates to the power control module. If it detects any irregular pressures, it will shoot a code for the EVAP system. It also uses that unit to test the system to ensure it holds its pressure during operation. 
Moving on to the next component in the EVAP system are lines and hoses. There are a wide variety of materials when it comes to these components. You could have rigid hard steel lines, high density plastics, or basic rubber lines. But at the end of the day, they all serve the same purpose, allowing fumes to get from point A to point B. The last component that we're talking about is the fuel tank and the filler neck. The fuel tank is designed to store all the fuel of the vehicle. Remember, fuel is very volatile and creates a lot of fumes. Back in the day, fuel tanks were constructed of steel, but on newer vehicles, now they're constructed of higher density plastic. There's also a filler neck that links to the fuel tank. This is where the fuel travels down as you're pouring in the fuel. It is also constructed of high level rubbers and high density plastics. EVAP system plays a critical role in the functionality of the vehicle. If there's a problem within the system, you can have many drivability problems. All these components must work together harmoniously in order for the EVAP system to function appropriately. If you're having problems with the EVAP system, please click on the link below for more thorough troubleshooting steps. Big thanks to AutoLine Pro. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.